that here, they go back around. Listen, what Paul's laying down here, that younger generation, 20 years of age, got to go in. If you're a believer and you go home today, your house is sanctified and set apart because of who's living inside of you when you walk in your home, even if you have unbelievers in your home. That's what Paul's laying down. That's hardcore. Now, what if you have unbelievers and you still have a child? Is that child going to go in the rapture of the church and the bride of Christ is called up? Revelations 4, 4 11 right there, 4 1 will come up hither. Matthew 25, the bride of Christ is shown a picture. 1 Thessalonians, the last trumpet, twinkling of an eye, boom! The rapture of the church goes on. Is that little kid going to go? I don't know. Only God has that answer. But I will tell you this. God is fair. He's just. Personally, I believe that little kid would go for me. But I don't know the answer to it because it doesn't tell me that. But it does tell me that that believer that walks in that home, that house is sanctified. It's set apart. It's still considered holy. Check this out. Verse 14. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Otherwise your children would be unclean, but now they are holy. But if the unbeliever departs, in other words, they don't want to be married to you because you're a Jesus freak. Right? And sometimes that other partner just doesn't know when to shut up, do they? You know? Right? Sometimes we just are unbalanced. We're not really balanced Christians. And we just keep harping and harping and harping, don't we? A lot of men do that to the women. And a lot of women do it to the guys. Right? We become that continual drip kind of thing where it irritates us, right? Well, this is what Paul has to say about it. But if the unbeliever departs, verse 15, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. cases. But God has called us to peace. For how do you know, O wife, whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know, O husband, whether you will save your wife? Isn't that wild? See, you don't know. I don't know who's going to get saved today. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen to me today. I don't know. I believe many people went out today, got up, had their coffee like me, spent time with the Lord, boogied out their front door to do whatever they got to do. Put on their shoes the same way I did. But I don't believe a lot of them realized that they were going to be in a body bag by 4 o'clock and somebody else was doing the zipper on the bag and then throwing them in the back of a truck. That's happening all over the world. Many vehicles running around our, our, our country and our streets every day picking up dead bodies, guys. All over the place. People are dying to get in. You know? <coughs> Check this out. But as God has distributed each one, okay, as the Lord has called each one, so let him walk. And so I ordain in all the churches. Was anyone called while circumcised? Let him not be uncircumcised. That is the Gentiles. Was anyone called while uncircumcised? Let him not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing, but keeping the commandments of God is what matters. Let each one remain in the same calling in which he was called. Were you called while a slave? Do not be concerned about it, but if you can be made free, rather use it. For he who is called in the Lord while a slave is the Lord's freedman. Likewise, he who is called while free is Christ's slave. You are bought at a price. Do not become slaves of men. Brethren, let each one remain with God in that state in which he was called. In other words, let God use you. You were bought with the blood of Christ. You're not your own. You're the instrument that God wants to use and play. He owns it. He wants to get the most out of His investment. <coughs> How many of us are allowing Him to use us for where He wants us to be? <coughs> Think about it. 
Friday night comes, you get the phone call, you got the block party going down here. 25 taker tonight instead of 24. You know what I mean? This guy's got the green weed walking in the back door thinking he's cool, and the other guy's got the mushrooms, and this person in this room's got the cocaine, this and that, and they all think they're cool. That's the world. That's the world. Let me share something with you. There's no fruit there. When you get older, you look back, there's nothing to look back on but the stupid stuff you did. There's no fruit. You hurt people. You got involved in hurting people and people hurting you. And people turned you out into merchandise so they can make money on you. That's all it is. <coughs> now, <coughs> Paul's talking about how we were before in our BC days and how we are now while I'm saved in Christ. And if I'm saved, I'm a new creature. I'm a new creation. Behold, all things have passed away and all things are new because of the blood of Christ. The life that's in the blood, Leviticus 11, 17 says. And if you've been washed, cleansed in the blood of Christ, you're a new person. Everything you've done in the past, it has no, 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 it has no authority to be in the present with you anymore or in your future. It's done. It's been washed. If that's the case, then why am I concerned still about the things of the world, of that 25K party? Why am I concerned about those things anymore? You know why? Because I still have this weakness which is called the flesh. And it still wants its own way. It still wants to do its own thing. So I have to suppress it. I have to beat it into subjection of the power of the Holy Spirit to get victory over it. So if I feed the Spirit more throughout the week, I'm going to get victory over something that's weak. So this is what I tell people. <clears throat> How do you know which one wins at the end? The flesh or the spirit? It's real simple. It's by the one that you fed the most while you were here. Are you feeding the spirit? Or are you feeding the flesh? Say. Now, Paul in verse 25. And don't get me wrong, there's a lot of things here. I've gone through a lot of things prior to this chapter on things we've hit already. So I don't have to go that far in depth in this. There, there's a lot of meat here. We can be here for a while. But we've gone through a, a lot of this. Verse 25. Now concerning virgins, basically talking to the dads. Touch my daughter, dude. Check out what happens to you. We're going to have a triple shot that way. Right? I have no commandment from the Lord, yet I give judgment as one whom the Lord in His mercy has made trustworthy. I suppose, therefore, that this is good because of the present distress, that it is good for a man to remain as he is. Are you bound to a wife? Do not seek to be loosed. <coughs> Are you loose from a wife? Do not seek a wife. But even if you do marry, you have not sinned. And if a virgin marries, she has not sinned. Nevertheless, such will have trouble in the flesh, but I would spare you. You see what Paul is saying? That if you still have it in you and you want to get married, even if you've passed the age of your flower, you're 40, 50, whatever, and you still want to get married, he's not saying that you've sinned or anything like that. But he's saying it's going to be tough. You've been married, you know. You haven't been married before. You've been a bachelor your whole life and you're 50 and you think you're ready for marriage. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's see how that one works out. You know what I mean? They usually come crying over at you at about 11 o'clock and I, bro, you know what I mean? And I just kick them out. Get out of here. You know, go back and tell your wife you're sorry and then you're the worthless piece of junk that you really are. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, this is what you wanted, man. Enjoy it. <laughs> right? Ah. Uh, why? Because marriage is tough. This is what Paul's really laying down. You guys want a beautiful... Oh, she's so fine, dude. Oh, dude. Right? Uh -huh. <laughs> that lady that's just so fine, I've heard this many years later. She took me for 350 grand, bro, and I worked 10 years, and he took it all. You know, I went, well, dude, praise the Lord. That everything that has breath right now, praise the Lord. Go forward in the Lord. Bro, you don't understand, man. I'm broken. You know, and my life is broken. 
You know, but 10 years ago, dude, she was so fine. What happened? <laughs> happens every day. The enemy got in is what happened. you got to earn it. And I sit there and start talking to them, especially her. Did he ever wake up in the morning and grab you by your hand or sit there and go, hey, let's pray before you walked out your front door and put your war paint on knowing you're going to spiritual battle every day? Did you do that? And I look right at him. I go, dude, you're shot out, bro. <laughs> you're done. You know what I mean? I never have to talk to her for a long time in that counseling situation. It's always to the guy. Why? Because they're prideful. They're arrogant. And they don't want to do that. Well, then what do you, why do you expect a result if you're not willing to do that? I'll share something with you that I share with someone else that that man doesn't talk to me today since I did. So I don't expect to see him here next week. I said, listen, if you're not going to marry this girl, when we understand something, I love her. Someone else will marry her. A year later, she was married to someone else. Yep. Welcome to the real world. See, it's just a basic principle thing. I'm engaged in a spiritual war. Once I give my life to Christ, He comes in by the power of the Holy Spirit. And now I'm aware of a spiritual battle going on around me. And I'm aware of the fleshly things of life. And the two are contrary with one another inside, like Paul was talking to the Church of Rome. Okay? And they're warring against each other constantly all the time. But I'm aware of a spiritual battle now that I was never aware of before. I've become born again. I'm born again, and I'm looking around going, wow, I trip out of what I'm seeing now. Your eyes have been opened to the truth of what's happening in the world. Okay? Now I'm engaged in a spiritual warfare every day. And you think you're going to go out into the society that we have today and you're cool without preparing yourself with the proper things to put on you spiritually? Everything out here today is designed to remove your purity and to rip you off of your relationship with God. I don't care what anybody else has to say. You can't even walk by a stupid bus stop anymore without it being porn. The commercials for a burger. Really? I will show you a burger. <laughs> I guarantee you people are going to be coming to my place for the burger. Okay? You're going to go, man, dude, I am just in love with that burger. Yeah. And I'm going to show you this burger, how it's made this set. There has nothing to be. What does sex have to do with a burger? I don't get it. Hugh Hefner's still walking around in a, in a robe and thongs. You know, he looks like a raisin. You know what I mean? They're only there for the money. You know what I mean? It's obvious, but I mean, it's disgusting. And he's. It's disgusting. It's sick. It's sad. It's like, really, dude? Really? This is what your daughter has to look up to her dad? Hey, dad. Hey, how's your dad? Hey, he's still a pervert. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> yeah, you know? Think about it. You don't want to grow up, dude? No, I don't want to grow up. Okay? But you had to go to the cross to go to hell. Remember that. You're going to pay a high price, dude. you up. See, just because you got married doesn't solve problems. You took on another problem. You took on another person, another set of needs. Okay? There are potentials there for good, bad, and all the indifference. There's a lot on the table. You can't take it lightly. Getting married doesn't solve your problems. But even if you do marry, Paul says, you have not sinned, and if a virgin marries, she has not sinned. Nevertheless, such will have trouble in the flesh, but I would spare you. 